As I open the door, I see Isabella and wave hello. She smiles, but she seems to be busy. As I'm sitting down with my food, I notice Chad coming in. Ugh, this man, this might get ugly. I stick to my seat, but I don't exactly call for his attention. I may not be afraid of a little trouble, but that doesn't mean I need to go looking for it. Besides, I should be here in case Isabella needs my backup, but I don't want to start drama. Luckily, Isabella doesn't notice him at first and keeps serving other customers. Finally, after a few moments, I hear Chad clearing his throat loudly. Hey, Isabella! I don't get to have a word or nothing? I don't see why you should get a word in. Do you honestly feel like there's something to say? Because I don't particularly. Come on, don't be like that, baby. Look, I'm sorry I screwed up. Doesn't mean we ha can't have some good times, right? You really think that's all it's going to take? Isabella sets down the tray she was carrying with enough force that sounds that the sound echoes through the whole cafe. We're over, you bee. You had your chance at greatness, and you blew it. Now scuttle off and leave me be. Come on, baby. I'm not the only one missing out. We had some good times, right? We have made, I've made some mistakes, sure, but I'm coming to you on my knees here. Oh, are you? Really? Because you look like you're standing perfectly well to me. You don't even have flowers or chocolates or anything. You're not even trying. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad you didn't bring me flowers. I'd hate to think you wasted your money. We done here? Nice, Isabella. Come on, you think you can do better than me? Just forgive me already. Are you kidding? I could find a better man than you out behind the dumpsters. Chad turns red in anger for a moment. Good, nice, I love the sass. Good for you for standing up for yourself, Isabella. Are you kidding me? I'm the best thing that's ever happened to you. I, I think Isabella's doing great. I think she's doing fantastic. She, she doesn't need any saving, it seems. I think for a moment about jumping in and sticking up for Isabella, but then I realized I'd just be butting in. This is between Isabella and Chad, and she doesn't need me sticking my nose in. No, Chad, the best thing that ever happened to me was finding out early that you were a boneheaded, selfish a-hole without a lick of sense to you. If you had any of those, you wouldn't have treated me the way you did. So why do you think I want to have anything to do with your ridiculous arse? Hey, look, I'm just saying we... You're just saying, hey, sucker, I want to treat you like a possession and sex toy. Why won't you go back into my pocket where you belong? Here's a hint, because I'm none of those things. And the fact that you probably even now don't understand that is why we will never, ever be together again. Mad props to Isabella. Oh, yeah. Chad looks completely stunned by Isabella's tirade. He's just standing there, slack-jawed. She didn't need my help at all. She didn't need my rescuing at all. I'm sick of you taking up my air. Jack off. I'm going to the back. If you're still here when I get back, you're going to be the sorriest sack of this whole school. Isabella stalks off to the back, completely ignoring Chad. For his part, Chad just shakes his head and turns to leave. He can't muster a quip or line. He's been completely defeated. A few minutes later, Isabella comes out of the back and spots me still sitting there. Oh man, you saw all that? Huh? What an a-hole, am I right? I just smile and nod. I'm proud of you, Isabella. Thanks for not butting in. I hate it when people try to fight my fights for me. See? There you go. I knew you had him, babe. No way that micro mind was going to walk all over you. Well, thanks anyway. You full? If not, I'll grab you something good. Sounds great! Oh, so for not budding in. Nice. She liked the fact that I didn't butt in. Cool. Alright, let's try to maximize our studying time. Finally, I got a little free time to start thinking about this end of the year gig I've been planning. I need to ask around and see what kind of parties I can dig up. Alright, time to find a party around here. Shouldn't be too hard. This isn't exactly a party-free campus. Of course, the easiest way to do that is to talk to hardest, the hardest partying person I know. Dominic? Oh. I knock on Isabella's and give her my best smile as she opens up. Hey, babe. Mind if I come in a sec? Sure thing, hot stuff. What brings you down the long, hard trek from your room to mine? Actually, I had a quick question. I'm trying to throw a gig together here on campus, and I'm wondering if you knew of anyone throwing a big end-of-the-year bash. Oh, uh, funny you should ask. Actually, Anne's trying to throw one. What? Anne? Shy girl extraordinaire? Isabella shrugs and just points me down the hall. A moment later, I'm knocking on Anne's door. Oh, hey, Max. What's going on? So, how come you didn't tell me about this party you're supposedly throwing? Anne looks like she's about to blush, but then looks like she's trying really hard not to. Well, it's still pretty early in the planning stages, so I haven't really told many people about it yet. You have entertainment already? You have entertainment already? No, that's my next task. 
Well, as it turns out, I know this incredible band that would love to get a gig going at a hot college party. Oh, you mean it? That's terrific. Once we figured out where we're going to throw it, I'll talk to you to work out the details. Thanks, Max. This means a lot to me. Apparently, it means so much to her that she swirls away excitedly, shutting the door on me. I head back to my room and dial up Memphis, filling him in on all the details. Luckily, he hasn't been idle, and I have to admit, he picked a pretty good lineup for our set. Okay, so we got our venue and our set. Now we just need to figure out how to get the word out. Does she know where she's holding it yet? Not yet. I figure we'll just get some flyers done. Fair enough. You want to draw them? I can't do flyers. Maybe we can get Slim to do them. Now I'll figure now I'll figure it out. Well, maybe you can ask the artist, the artist Rakesh to help you. Okay, you want to go flashy or utilitarian? Flashy might draw a bigger crowd, but the crowd we draw won't necessarily be fans, so they'll be harder to please. A utilitarian flyer gets us a crowd that knows what they're in for, and even if they might not be as big. Do I want quality or quantity? Mm, go big or go home, let's go flashy. Let's see how big our crowd appeal really is. Just a simple utilitarian look. Hmm. Um, we're trying to get our name out there. It's a risk, but we're trying to get our name out there. So the more exposure, the better. Go big or go home. Let's go flashy. Hmm. Last time I checked, we weren't called back alley utilitarian. Ah, all right, all right. Just a suggestion. Seriously, who's going to do it, though? Don't worry. I think I know what to do with that. Just leave it to me. All right. Nice. Now, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Yeah, we need to put in some sleepy times. So, we're going to throw in some sleep earlies in here. Yeah. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Um, 35, 30. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do this. We'll do this. Cool. I snag a good seat, prepare for another class. I sometimes can't believe they still let Professor Tax, Tax teach here. I guess that's the power of tenure. I wonder what he's going to get into today. All right, you little money sack. Sit down. Let's get this started. Everyone quiets down, settling in their seats. The professor turns on the projector and starts displaying slides. The slides seem to be displaying a countryside. A few buildings dot it. As he progresses through the slides, you see a bunch of people standing in front of buildings and posing. Professor, are we just looking at your vacation slides? What's your point? I'm trying to get to a point. If certain noise, noisy, know-nothings would stop interrupting me. I sit back in my seat, not believing we're actually looking at a professor's vacation slides. Ah, here we are. This is the slide that matters. On the projector is a picture of some kind of small green statue. The fabled Jade Monkey of Tuscatoon, a small village in western Nigeria. I sought this fabled statue for six years before beginning my career here. Unfortunately, just as it was in my grasp, I lost it to a rival hunter. What's the point of this, Professor? Oh yes, what's the point indeed? The point, my dear, is that I've never given up my search and now I've located the final piece. I know that one of you has it. I bet you it's Butch. The professor points at Roxanne and myself. The rest of the class gasps in surprise. Why, whatever you mean, dear professor. Yeah, what are you talking about? Oh, don't play dumb with me. Give up the jade monkey and I won't have to spring the trap I planted on both of your chairs. The professor pulls out a small switch attached to a radio transmitter. I look under my chair and see the dynamite he planted there. What? Give up the jade, I'm wondering. Give up the jade monkey? I stand up, reaching in my backpack. I'd only just bought this thing a few weeks ago at a second-hand store. How was I supposed to know it was the professor's? Fine, fine, you can have the thing. It's not like I'm attached to it. Not so fast, Max. Boys. Roxanne snaps her fingers and suddenly a bunch of men burst into the every door. They're all wearing ninja masks, but they've got machine guns. Is this a dream? I know you, you... I think you know exactly whom the Jade Monkey belongs to, don't you? You're not the only one who could set up a trap task. This has got to be a dream. Do you see the type of evil people I need to keep this from, Max? Don't worry about these men. Just give me the monkey. As the professor says this, he suddenly sprouts three more arms, his teeth growing pointy and long. I'm not sure what to do. Finally, I just close my eyes and throw the monkey into the air, diving aside. I can hear gunfire and fighting. Suddenly, I feel a presence near me. I open my eyes to see Roxanne standing above me. Her eyes are glowing red. Hasta la vista, baby. 
With a start, I lift my head off my desk. I can't believe I fell asleep. What was that dream? And that's why you should always be aware of what kind of cheese you're buying in foreign countries. See, I told you I was getting to a point. Oh, that was entertaining. I love that. I love that a lot. Time's running short to get my new plans in motion. I need to get a great poster out to let people know what I'm doing. I think it's time I talk to Rakesh. Yeah. I head down the hall, formulating my plan as I go. I knock on Rakesh's door, thinking what about what kind of a poster he might make. Ah, oh, Max, please come in. Hey, bro. I give Rakesh a quick high five as I enter his room. Let's get right to business. I need to commission you. What? What for? Have you heard about this party Anne's throwing? My band's going to be playing. Oh, yes, she invited me the other day. That is incredibly exciting, Max. Yes, let us design a poster for your outing. Speak to me, Max. Speak to me of music. Let's talk music to me, Max. Uh, that's what he's thinking. Rakesh spins with a flourish and walks over towards his easel, placing a new sheet of paper on it. He's a very silly person sometimes. I sit down in his bed and watch as he stares at the paper, waiting for me to talk first. Well, you know the, the band Back Alley Flash? We want something flashy. Something that says, we're here to blow your socks off. And your panties. Hmm, yes. Yes, I can produce this thing for you. I shall craft such a poster that a woman's undergarments shall implode from the glory. I love it, Rakesh. Rakesh starts sketching on his paper, making wild marks across everywhere. I can't really tell what's, what's on it. A few minutes later, he turns to look at me. He gestures towards a big white space towards the top of the poster. What do you think? I can put your portraits up here, or I can put something more imaginative. Let my, let's put my picture in there. Give the people what they want. Let your imagination fly, Rakesh. I trust you. Hey, I said flashy, Rakesh. You give me whatever you like. Rakesh grins at me and starts sketching into the white space. This will take a while. I will have your posters ready to distribute tomorrow. I will even put them around up for you. Oh, thank you. All right, Rakesh. It's in your hands now. Well, that was easy. Nice. Rakesh has got our backs. How awesome is that? Yes. Back in my room at last. As I'm putting my keys on my desk, there's a knock on my door. Max, you have to help me. They have outwitted me. I stand with my keys in hand, staring at Rakesh. Who's outwitted you? His parents. My parents. They're going to be video calling me in 20 minutes. So? So? The letter I wrote them. They're not coming. But they still want to check up on me. You have to help me. I look down at the keys in my hand for a moment before answering. I'm going to help them, of course. All right, Rakesh, what do you want me to do? I mean, it's just a phone call. It's not like they can hurt you through the phone, even if it's a video conference. I don't know. I have to convince them that I'm okay here and there's no need to worry and um, that I'm still on the medical track. I thought we agreed you were going to tell them the truth about what you were doing. I am... maybe have chickened out a little on that. I sort of told them the truth. I told them that I was studying art and really enjoying it. I just also told them that I was still studying medicine. I sigh and shake my head at him. That just complicates things. I know, but it would be terrible to tell him the whole truth. Ah, oh, fine, what do you want to do? I'm quite glad you asked. Fifteen minutes later, Rakesh is standing in front of his laptop with a webcam attached. We're sitting in Anne's room, which is probably the cleanest looking of all the rooms here. I'm not sure how we convince Anne to leave, but it's just the two of us in here. Rakesh has strewn various charts and graphs around the room, and I'm lying in bed with a cold compress on my head. Not to mention a rather hastily put together paint job that's supposed to make me look like a sick person. But mostly makes me look like a Martian. Oh, great. You really think this is going to work? It must, Max. We can pull this off. Together. Alright, what are you trying to pull off? Together? Just a few moments later, his video conferencing the software bleeps at him, and Rakesh hurriedly tucks me into his bed. His bed? You mean Anne's bed? Okay, here we go. Remember, I am the competent medical student, and you are my patient. He's playing doctor with Max. Aww. I moan, in a sickly fashion, and Rakesh gives me a thumbs up. A video screen pops up on his computer, and I can just barely make out the blurry image of Rakesh's parents. I quickly lay my head back down, though, so I look more like I'm resting. Rakesh says something in Urdu that I assume is a greeting. Then his parents say something back. Are you sure? I do not mind. I have not had a chance to speak my native tongue lately. His parents say something back, and Rakesh just nods, continuing in English. Well, this is my office, where I keep my computer. As you can see, I have a patient here right now, so I cannot talk too loudly. Oh yes, it is very normal for one such as I, who is moving so well along the path 
to earning my doctorate. I must prove my skill my skills after all. I try not to roll my eyes. He's really overselling it. Hmm. Oh no, my patient is very uncomfortable. I'm sure. After all, I do my best to attend to visit to their needs whenever they arise. Whenever they arise. That was my cue. I cough loudly, moaning in a sickly fashion and trying to roll around. Ah, just a moment. I will be right back. Oh, the pain. And also the misery. So much of that as well. I'm in both pain and misery. Also a little hungry, but that seems irrelevant compared to the pain and also misery. Rakesh glares at me for a moment while he pretends to check my charts. I try not to laugh. I feel a little bad about the hammy acting. Finally, Rakesh puts one, one of these blood pressure de dealies on my arm and a stethoscope on my chest. I don't think that's how those things are used, but I cough a few times to make it seem good. Oh my goodness, your pressure is 190 over 24, and your fever is 55 degrees Celsius. You, we must boost your fluid stat. I am so sorry, father and mother, but I will have to call you back another time. My patient here may be collapsing. I gurgle a little and fall back limp. I really hope this helps, though a part of me really hopes it doesn't. These kind of th theatrics can't last forever. What, um, what do you mean what am I doing? I am tending to a patient as we in medical training do. Of course this is real. What else, what else could it be? Well, I guess these kind of theatrics don't last very long at all. Rakesh is floundering. I open my eyes and see him sweating bullets, looking at the screen. I guess the jig is up. Get up and tell them the truth. I sit up in bed, removing the cold compress and trying to smear some of the paint off my face. Okay, that's about enough of that. Look, Rakesh's parents, sorry. I don't know your names, and I don't understand Urdu either. Rakesh tries to move his arms to stop me, but seems too horrified to move. But here's the gist. Your boy here hates medicine. It's not in his bag. He's not into it. You understand? It's great that you want him to be a doctor, but he wants to be an artist, and he's actually got talent too. So, you can either sit there stifling your kid until he explodes, or you can step off and let your son grow into the man he's meant to be. Yes. Yes, it's true. I am sorry to both of you, but my heart is not in medicine. It is not who I am meant to be. No, this is not one of my childish whims. I know this in my heart. I know what I am in, in my heart, and a doctor is not it. For the next few minutes, there's a little else but yelling coming from the other side of the internet connection. Rakesh stands next to me with the pained look every child gets when they're yelled at by their parents. Aww. I feel for him, but then I know it had to be done. I felt bad basically outing him, but, like, he's only making it worse for himself by lying. Yes, I understand, Father. Perhaps you both require more time to cool down. I will speak with you another time. His parents say something else, and then Rakesh responds, this time in Urdu. Then the line cuts and Rakesh slumps down on the, on the bed. That was harrowing. I do not know if that was the right choice, Max, but it is made. Perhaps for the best. We shall see. I think you'll find it will lift a burden from you, Rakesh. You'll see. Max has gotten... Max has grown up. He's gotten so much more, like, mature. I'm actually pretty proud of him a bit. Alright. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. We can study, study, study. How on earth can in one class have so much homework assigned? Yeah, okay, give me a call tomorrow. Yeah, okay, give me a call tomorrow. We'll run down the set list, okay? Sounds good, man. I think I'm gonna just hold up tonight and work on some stuff. I want to sound as tight as possible. All right, don't work too hard. You'll drive yourself up a wall, man. Sure, sure. Memphis and I wave goodbye to each other. Maybe I won't just practice the set list. Time to get some real work done. I don't... Yeah, okay, so we're study, study, study. Tonight's the big night. Everything I've worked for comes down to tonight. All right, Max, we've got everything ready. Well, just about. We've got the flyers all printed up and the spare stuff all ordered. Had to get some spare ants and a few new mics. Long story short, bro, it's time to pay the piper. Yeah, yeah, all right. But otherwise, we're all ready to go, right? Yeah, though I don't think Anne's paying us until after tonight, so you better have the money up front. Or you can call everything off. It'd piece some people off, but I guess it's better than starving in a, in a gutter somewhere. Must you always be so dramatic? We're gonna do this. Oh! Anne did a great job with this place. A few hours later, I'm standing in a rented party hall, watching everything get set up. It looks like Anne went out of her way to get this whole thing going right. I can see even... I can even see a bartender setting up shop. Hopefully she won't mind a few extra guests when our fans show up. Finally, I spot the van coming in. 
There, you jerk, Sara. I thought you stood me up. You wish. Then you would have had the whole stage to yourself. As the band flies in, I'm a little surprised to see Sally helping them carry instruments up to the makeshift stage we set up. As she dumps off her load, she gives Memphis a kiss on the cheek. Oh, that's right, because they're dating. How cute. All right, I'm going to see if Anne needs any help now. Come see me when you get a chance after the show, huh, stud? You got it, baby girl. That's so cute that they started dating. I shake my head at the two of them. After another hour or so, I hear Anne yelling across the hall. Okay, everyone, I'm going to open the door. Close the curtain. You're, in, you're on in 20 minutes, Max. I give her a thumbs up and she smiles as the curtain closes. I can hear the crowd gathering and take a quick peek through the curtain. The band is almost ready. Our sound checks are long since finished. We're just making sure everything's locked down. Good crowd out there. Looks like we got a lot of attention. Yeah, I'll bet that fly was bad, eh? I grin at Memphis and close the curtain. A few minutes later, I hear Anne walking on stage. Everyone, thank you very much for coming to attend my end of the year party. I know a lot of you are freshmen like me. And if nothing else, we first year should stick together. So let's not let this year be the last we see each other. I hope we can support each other and be friends all through the college. She's laying it on a little thick, but I'm sure she's just excited. The crowd roars in appreciation of the sentiment, though. Good to hear they appreciated it. And with that in mind, here's another band fronted by another first year student just like us. So I hope you're ready to rock like never before. May I present... Back Alley Flash! The curtains pull back almost instantly, and I strum a chord, taking a quick look at my band before grinning and hitting immediately into our first song. As I look over the crowd, I can tell the house is full. Everyone cheers as we really get going on our first number. This is going to be a great set. At least when I look carefully, I can spot all of our roommates here, ready to enjoy the show. Even Dominic showed up. Back Alley Flash plays his heart out for the next 70 minutes. By the end, the crowd is cheering and loving it. Oh, I'm so glad we got more fans. Taking a risk. I'm glad it paid off. I can see the bartender standing bored. Looks like everyone was too enraptured to go even go after drinks. Wow. When the crowd inevitably calls for an encore, we give it to them. Playing a fast dance number, most of the crowd grab a partner and start dancing up a storm. I notice Rakesh grabbing Carmen for a dance. I'm surprised to see Carmen grab Rakesh's butt, though the grin on his face tells me it's alright with him. I can see all the other roommates dancing together, making a nice circle. Finally, we finish our set and the curtains close on us. The band stands up, stretches after a long set, and cheers. We did a fine job out there. Not bad, not bad, you stage hog. Ha, huh, not bad yourself, jerk face. I give him a quick hug before high-fiving Jerry and Slim. Memphis won't let that stand, though, and drags us all in for a group hug. As Sally and Slim's boyfriend come backstage to see their respective partners, I slip out to the crowd to revel in the afterglow. I take in the high fives and definitely accept a few free drinks while I scope the babes that are flocking to my newly discovered greatness. This is definitely what being a rock god is all about. Oh man, we make our way over to the other roommates who are still all still gathered. All right, how was it really? That was a good show, Max. I didn't know you actually had hard work in you. Oh, I'm gonna blush, D-bag. Thanks. Everyone laughs and congratulates me on a job well done. And with that, I think everyone deserves a drink on me. Everyone cheers as we go forth to celebrate the end of the year for a little longer. Oh, I'm glad that things succeeded for Max. He got what he wanted. All right, kids, you've got finals next week, so I'm sure you've all got plenty of studying to do. I could try teaching you something that's going to be on the finals, but really, why should I start teaching now? The professor throws a slide at the projector that just says study before walking out of the room. Half of the class opens their books and starts studying. The other half starts standing up to pick up their things. Not sure which way I should, which I should do. Um, let's play this out and see what happens. Well, if I'm going to study, I'll do it in my own place. I pick up my things and head out the door with a bunch of other students with the same idea. I make my way over to the cafe. Figure I'll get a bite while I study. Well, Max, I guess the gang's all here. I look towards Sally's voice and see that all of my roommates really are here. They've all gathered on the table in the corner. It looks like I've even Isabella took a break from work to sit down. We all just kept coming in one by one. I suppose our great minds have thought alike. There's an empty spot near everyone I slide into, as everyone grins. Is everyone else's professor as crazy as Professor Task? No, he's the only a-hole with tenure around here. I think the schedule's all just worked out. Wow, we almost never get to do this. This is so nice. Yeah, we should get together more often. Most of you are pretty alright. 
Oh, I love this group, this group shot. They look so great. These characters, I really love them all. They're so great. Isabella reaches out to punch me in the, the arm as she laughs. It's been a long year, hasn't it? It really has been. Lots of fun, though. Yeah, I think this has been the most fun I've ever had this year. I'm just happy you managed to learn something. Like, one singular thing. I don't know what exactly, but... Oh, shut up. Honestly, you guys, thanks for everything this year. How about this? I know I got here late, but everyone gets a drink on me, huh? Everyone on the table cheers as I stand and go over to the counter to make a drink order. As I wait for the other clerk to get my order ready, I look back at the table with all my roommates. Friends. Sitting around it. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love this one. This has been a good year. And frankly, I can't wait to see what happens next. The next two weeks fairly fly by. The next two weeks fairly flew by. Between my finals and everyone else's, I barely got any time to spend with my friends. I put a lot of work into the last final, but it's not really my last one. Sometimes the idea of three more years of this seems incredibly daunting. Which is precisely why I didn't want to get caught up in this college bowl in the first place. I probably wouldn't even be on campus today if I hadn't needed to sell back some books. As long as I was here though, I went ahead and printed off my grades for the year. Despite all the craziness this quarter, I even managed to keep my, my, keep my grades up. Just goes to show how, exactly how amazing I am. I kept my grades up without even trying. As I walk back towards Latin House to pack some things for a trip back home, a couple of people wave at me. I think they probably caught my show a few weeks back. I give them a wink and a smile. The two seem glad I wave back. They throw up the horns at me, give me a loud cheer. I give a quick bow before going on my way. I'm glad people like the show. We've gotten a lot of good buzz off of it. Finally, standing back on the porch of the Latin house, I think over all the things I've done this year. Smiling to myself, I open the door and head inside. I head up to my room, looking around at my things. I'm pretty sure they usually kick us students out here during the summer. Well, arrangements can be made. It's not like I haven't got at least a little dirt on the RA. Either way, I've got some business in town before I head back home to see my parents, so hopefully I can keep myself here just a bit longer. I really only came to this college for two things, to get my band started and to kick arse. My band's had a lot of successful successes this year, and that party at the end has really made a name for us. I think most of all, I've proven that with some work and dedication, we can get back Alley Flash on the map. And once we've done that, I'm perfectly happy kicking all this college stuff to the curb. Though, that said, I did have a heck of a lot of fun here this year. So yeah, I'm not going to slack off on building towards my dream. But, maybe I'm not the biggest hurry to leave after all this. I grab up my guitar and head back out the door. Time to head down to Gaz's bar and see what we can do. It's about time you got here, you slacker. Cut me a break, Jack A. I had some stuff to do on campus. I clap Memphis a high five as the two of us settle down on a couple of chairs on the stage. Neither of us has a real practice. Neither of us has a real practice space, and it's before Gaz's normal opening, so we've got some time. Uh huh. I don't think they've give pity degrees. Oh ha ha! It is to laugh. You gonna play, or are you just gonna insult me? Maybe I'm getting the insults out of the way before you insult me with that noise you call you call playing. I kick Memphis in the shin as he laughs at me. For the rest of the afternoon, we jam together, taking notes, making mistakes, and fixing them. Just generally playing. As we sit here, I can feel my dreams inching closer with every note. I revel in that feeling. This is the beginning for us. Nowhere to go but up. And when I'm sitting there at the top, I'm going to look back at my time here at college. And I think it'll be a pretty good memory. Aww. So yeah, that's the last thing I remember doing my first year of college. Hey, it's been years since I thought about my college days. As I look back at the time I spent in Latin House, I was definitely the start. It was definitely the start of a new chapter for me. The world seemed full of new possibilities, and I think I really wanted to seize all of them. I really tried to push myself academically. I figured as long as I was there, I might as well try. My parents were pretty surprised to see the kind of grades I was pumping out. It was pretty gratifying seeing the looks on their faces when I graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Music. Hmm. Whatever. Whatever happened did happen to the others? It's hard to remember anybody these days. Let's see. Oh, I love this. I love how they're recapping everybody. Rakesh ended up going home that summer. He got back the next year, though he had actually, though he had to actually pay his own way. He followed his art bug and actually managed to get several pieces into local art shows before settling in at the design firm. I love this. I love all of this. 
Dominic finally managed to get his physics degree about the same time I was graduating. Of course, with the job market the way it was at the time, he didn't have any great prospects right off the bat. He spent the next years continuing to provide RA functions for the university, thanks to his record. Eventually, he got a job with one of those space exploration startups. Oh, cool! The other week, I got some spare bolts from one of their test flights. It's pretty cool stuff. Sally managed to get arrested three times during the course of college, though it was usually just at some protest or something, so she tended to get off with just slaps on the wrist. Eventually, her willingness to be stupid in the name of a cause got her noticed by a World Animal Foundation. She eventually managed to get her degree. Now, she does publicity for the Foundation. Surprisingly, she and Memphis actually stayed together through the whole of it. They really did their best together. I don't think it ended until a couple years after college. As for me, well... Back Alley Flash definitely got a kickstart that first year of college. We kept working on her act while I was at college, but after college, the band did really well once I was out of college and could concentrate full time. Our following from the school was pretty huge. We soon graduated from Gaz's Bar to playing Honest to Good Stadiums, and we were filling them. Luckily, the interest being what it is, we didn't rise to instant stardom. Luckily, the industry being what it is, we didn't rise to instant stardom. I think we would have been bloated. I know I missed some chances with my education, but it paid off in the band. I'm not sure if you heard our last album. The guys producing it really worked some magic. If the pre-orders are any indication, this one should probably hit at number 10 on the charts, which ain't half bad. But yeah, everything else about me, you probably already know. And at any rate, that's good enough for now. I feel like I've been talking about myself for ages. How about you? How was your college experience? Oh, that was so good! That was so good. Even though we didn't finish any of the paths, I really enjoyed that. That ending was so well done. It actually is one of my favorite endings of all of the visual novels I've had. It had left you feeling really good, because may many of these um, visual novel games, if you don't end up finishing, like completing a path with somebody, the, the ending feels a bit lackluster. This one actually felt really complete. It felt nice. You know, we didn't end up with somebody romantically, but but Max was able to have a really awesome like uh, he 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 came in to this dreaming about having a successful band, and he got it. He got it. So it was a happy ending for him, and that doesn't mean that he won't end up finding somebody later. Not that I don't think that was like what he ultimately wanted to do was to. Well, I know he wanted to find someone, but I don't know if settling down with them long term was something he was really thinking about at the time. But, you know, that could be something that could come later. But, uh, no, I absolutely... This is a, so much fun, this game. I loved it, I loved it, loved it. I love the characters, I love the art style, I love the humor, I loved all of the holidays, all the events, I love the game mechanics, the schedule. So good, and I love how... The pacing is so great. Like you, they take you take your time building these relationships with these characters, and I love that. And I love you know how different events can connect with each other and they reference each other. So it's really cool. But we're not done yet because I am going to complete Rakesh's and Max's path. So stay tuned.